This is a stem cell. Until very recently, it used to be the star of the biomedical research community. Stem cells have been regarded as the magic bullet in cardiology for a very long time now, but as you will learn, maybe wrongly so. Here's why they look promising on paper. They are undifferentiated cells that are able to transform into many different cell types, like nerve cells, heart muscle cells, skin cells, and others. So the thinking went, whenever there's cell destruction, like in myocardial infarction, just give stem cells. They will colonize the heart and differentiate into heart muscle cells. Early research seemed to confirm this line of reasoning. For example, studies revealed that a small number of stem cells are capable of migrating into the damaged human myocardium following heart transplantation to replace damaged cardiomyocytes. Others found that they improved pump function, which was thought to be due to regeneration of new heart muscle cells. Based on these encouraging preclinical experiments, several groups rapidly transferred these concepts into the realm of clinical trials meaning trials of actual patients. While some of these patient trials showed minor improvements in heart function following myocardial infarction, most of them were ambiguous with no clear benefit and, well, quite disappointing. In an effort to summarize all clinical myocardial infarction trials, a recent meta-analysis looked at 12 randomized controlled trials, including 1,252 patients, and found that intracardiac stem cell therapy following myocardial infarction provided no noticeable benefits and no reduction in mortality. So why is it that preclinical studies found benefit in stem cell therapy, whereas clinical trials did not? Well, to begin with, it seems that only a small percentage of stem cells, around 1 to 5 percent, stay in the heart or whatever target organ they're intended for. The majority of cells are actually filtered and removed by the spleen, liver, lung, bone marrow, or lymph nodes, even if injected directly into the target organ. And even if they stay, many of them fail to differentiate into heart or other target cells entirely. So what's going on here? In an effort to make sense of it all, Knecki and colleagues made an interesting finding. They showed for the very first time that factors produced by stem cells, so-called paracrine factors, attenuate myocardial infarction. So what if it's not the stem cells themselves that are truly active, but factors secreted by them? This hypothesis was later supported by further research from the same group, which showed that paracrine factors produced by stem cells significantly attenuated hypoxia-induced heart cell death and fostered tissue regeneration in a rat model. The group of Wallard was the first to show that paracrine factors from stem cells and white blood cells have similar cytoprotective and proangiogenic effects. This clearly suggested that beneficial paracrine factors are not exclusive to stem cells but are produced by white blood cells too. The group of Ankersmith and colleagues at the Medical University of Vienna asked themselves what has to happen for the cell to start producing these beneficial paracrine factors. They knew that Toom and colleagues had previously proclaimed that it's not any kind of stem cell that's beneficial but cells that are undergoing apoptosis or programmed cell death. Toom never talked about paracrine factors. They thought that it's the dying cell itself that's active. Their speculation was founded on data that showed that apoptotic cells are immunosuppressive and thus attenuate inflammation. What makes their claim plausible is that, in fact, 5 to 25% of stem cells used in early stem cell trials were apoptotic undergoing programmed cell death when injected into study animals or trial patients. So Ankersmith and co-workers put the pieces of the puzzle together when they hypothesized that the beneficial effects observed in early stem cell studies were actually due to factors produced by dying cells, and that this effect was not limited to stem cells, but is operative in many other cell types too. They were later able to prove that hypothesis in various experiments. For example, they induced myocardial infarction in rats, one group received suspensions of apoptotic white blood cells, that cells plus paracrine factors. Apoptosis was induced through ionizing radiation. The other group received suspensions of non-apoptotic cells. When they looked at infarct size in both groups, they found that infarcts in rats who received apoptotic cells plus paracrine factors were much smaller compared to those who received suspensions of non-apoptotic cells. So it looks like the stress caused by ionizing radiation turns these cells into little bioreactors, producing lots of beneficial paracrine factors. The apoptotic group also had better cardiac pump function and less inflammation in the area of the infarct. They then repeated their experiment in pigs. Now you might think otherwise, but pigs are closer to humans than rats, at least biologically. This time, 
They just used paracrine factors, so no cells. They found that animals who had received factors from apoptotic cells had a dose-dependent improvement of pump function, whereas those who had received control medium did not. The hypothesis of beneficial paracrine factors produced by apoptotic cells has now been validated in lots of other areas outside of myocardial infarction. For example, Altman and colleagues found that paracrine factors could reduce the size of strokes in rats by 36%. Heider et al. found that paracrine factors enhance the regenerative process in rats with spinal cord injury. Miltner and co-workers showed that paracrine factors accelerate wound healing in a mouse model. Hacker showed that they could improve the regenerative process of burn wounds in pigs. Yet others showed that they induce angiogenesis and vasodilation exert antimicrobial effects, inhibit thrombus formation, enhance the release of neurotrophic factors, and much more. So these findings are highly suggestive that many of the beneficial effects observed in various stem cell trials are really due to paracrine factors produced by apoptotic cells. But why is it that dying cells produce these beneficial factors? Well, figuratively speaking, these cells are bodyguards. When they enter the process of programmed cell death, they alert surrounding cells so they can protect themselves. Let's take myocardial infarction as an example. When an artery is blocked, the cells that are supplied with blood and oxygen by this artery will die off and undergo infarction. The area of infarction is often small and circumscribed. However, the body's reactions to these events often makes things worse. In an effort to repair the damage, platelets, white blood cells, granulocytes, and others will travel into the area surrounding the infarct, causing thrombus formation, inflammation, and fibrosis, thereby making the scar even larger. This phenomenon is called microvascular obstruction. Now, paracrine factors from apoptotic cells suppress the damage that occurs in the setting of microvascular obstruction. They're immunosuppressive, so less thrombus formation, less inflammation, and less fibrosis. So the question is, how can we support and amplify these self-protective processes that are already operative in our bodies? That's where APOSEC comes into the picture. It's a formulation derived from apoptotic white blood cells. Here's how it's produced in a nutshell. First, white blood cells are obtained from blood banks. Apoptosis is then induced through ionizing radiation. The medium containing the active paracrine factors is subsequently separated from the apoptotic cells using centrifugation, upon which it's subjected to viral clearance and freeze-dried, yielding the final product, APOSEC. The beneficial effects of APOSEC have now been validated in several experimental animal trials, as well as in a phase one study of 10 patients in the setting of wound healing. Future indications include diabetic foot ulcer, acute myocardial infarction, spinal cord injury, and stroke. If you want to find out more about APOSEC and its beneficial effects, then absolutely make sure to download the review article below.